Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Third Battle of Anzac Cove, located in Anzac Cove, Adrianople Vilayet, Ottoman Empire, between Anzac General William Birdwood and his 17,000 Anzac forces, and the Turkish General Assad Pasha and his 2nd, 5th, 16th, and 19th Division, consisting of 42,000 Turkish troops, on the 19th of May, 1915. The previous week was fraught with skirmishes and light exchange of fire as the Anzac forces began to receive reinforcements. Just when things started to slow down, late night on May 18th, the Australian 4th Battalion reported movement, including light reflecting off bayonets. Without additional warning, the 5th Turkish Division charged from their trenches only 200 meters away. Without hesitation, the Australian 4th Battalion opened fire. Not realizing that the 5th Turkish Division was quickly followed by the 2nd and 16th Turkish Divisions. This was no longer just skirmishing, it was a full-on assault. The Turks were not positioned well, and the first wave of Turkish fighters died in a hail of gunfire from both rifles and machine guns. Subsequent waves began to roll across the field from the Turkish side towards the Anzac positions. Like the erosion of the sea, though, the Anzac forces had to move backwards slowly under Turkish bodies being hurled at them. By morning, the only movement in no man's land was the wounded and dying who were trying to crawl back to their own trenches. A quiet settled over the land as dawn arrived. As the new day's sunlight lit up the Anzac trenches, the Turk soldiers still remaining in their trenches could open fire on the Australian New Zealand troops. Soldiers on both sides knew the battle was over, and the Turks began to retreat. Unfortunately, Turkish headquarters received false information that some of the objectives had been reached. Thinking they still had a chance, Turkish command ordered a renewed attack which began with a heavy artillery barrage for several hours. It was first seen at the number one post on the fourth section. The Canterbury Mounted Rifles watched the Turks forming in a place called Malone's Gully. Fortunately for the Anzac forces, this place was within the wall of fire that the Anzac forces could fire from their machine guns. After a quick movement of position, the air was filled with fire again as Turkish soldiers were destroyed under a lead rain. The Turks that were fortunate enough to still be in trenches hunkered down and refused to charge. This is in essence what stopped the assault. The Turks just didn't want to die. By 5.25 a.m. the next morning, British General Birdwood ordered Anzac forces to charge the Turkish forces, resulting in Australian and New Zealanders leaving the safety of their trenches, and this is where the majority of Anzac losses occurred. This didn't last long, however, and showing the only sign of sanity on the Anzac side, Brigadier General Andrew Russell called off the subsequent Anzac assault waves believing it to be suicide. Instead, he had them settle in and they suffered through the Turkish artillery, waiting for another attack that never came. In that day, more than 1,370 18-pounder artillery rounds were fired, 143 howitzer rounds, and 1,410 smaller mountain artillery rounds, along with almost 1 million rifle and machine gun rounds. By the end of the next day, the stench from the corpses in no man's land was so heavy that Anzac and the Turks agreed to a truce to recover the bodies and bury the dead. Deaths were horrendous for this battle, with the Turks losing approximately 3,000 dead and 7,000 wounded and missing. The Anzac forces had only lost 628 men, comprising of 160 killed and 468 wounded. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.